Hello friends, welcome back to another awesome day. Day 58 of the 100 days of hell with Python Algo Trading. Today, we'll be understanding about option chain and all its components. Previously, we have covered 5 chapters of the book Option Volatility and Pricing and this will be the last topic of the chapter 6 from the book and from the next session, we will be starting with the uh, next chapter which is Risk Measurement in which we will understand about the Greeks. So without a further ado, let's get started. So first of all, the basic question is what is option chain? An option chain is nothing but a chain or you can say a list of different option contracts. It contains comprehensive information about the option contracts. It provides traders and investors with the critical information about the option market so that they can make informed decisions. Now, this option chain has various components like open interest, change in open interest, uh, volume, change in volume, mid quantity, mid price, then put quantity, put price. There are various components. And before we start option trading, we have to understand this option chain comprehensively. Otherwise, you will make so many mistakes and it will harm your portfolio. So first, I'll show you option chain from different markets like Yahoo Finance and Nasdaq and NSE. And then I'll explain you what are the components of the uh, option chain. And then we will also learn that how we can import the option chain data in Python. If you can see on the screen, this is the option chain from the Yahoo Finance. And you can see the option chain of the Apple from Nasdaq, right? The current price is 224. And then we have different contract names and the strike price, last price, bid, ask, change percentage, volume, uh, OI, IV. So this information is of the calls and for the 26 July 24. And if you scroll down, you will see the information about the puts also. You can see here the same information. And when you go to the official website of the NASDAQ, here also you can see for the Amazon.com. So here we have expression dates, then the option type, then strategy, like what is the moneyness ITM, OTM and ATM. Then we have the expression types like the weekly, monthly, quarterly and SABO. I'll explain you all these details comprehensively. And here we have calls and here we have puts. Then again, when we go to the NSE India, that you can see that we have the option and you have the option to check for the Nifty, uh, Nifty 50, Fin Nifty, Bank Nifty and Midcap Nifty. And here we have the symbols. You can select anyone and then the expiry date and then a strike price. So you can filter based on your uh, requirement. So if you click on like any symbol here, let's check for a Bazaar's Finance. So here you will see the same information which is displaying on almost all the uh, websites. There could be some slight changes like uh, in Yahoo Finance, the puts are on the bottom and calls are on the top. It's a continuous data, you can say. And here it's on the side by side. So it differs on every data provider and you have to modify your code accordingly. Okay, now let's understand the exact meaning of these various option components. So let's go to the screen and let me explain you one by one. Okay, if you can see on the screen, this is the underlying index. So let's first understand what is the meaning of underlying. We have covered most of these topics uh, already in previous videos, but let me again uh, reiterate. So first of all, we'll, we'll understand about the underlying. So what is underlying? So what is the meaning of underlying? It is the financial instrument on which the options are based, right? Here we can see the options are of the nifty. It is the index, right? So we can say here the underlying is nifty, nifty index. If let's say this option chain was for the Apple, then the underlying would have been the Apple stock. It depends that on which underlying you want to trade, right? Simply, we can write the financial instrument on which the option contracts are based. Next we have is the expiration date. So here it is mentioned and as the name suggests, it is the date on which the option expires. So we have learned already that option has two types. The first is American on the basis of expiry. We have American options and we have European options. American means A, A means anytime. European means only on the expiry date. That means you can excise your option 
in American anytime and in European you can only excise on the expiry and in India we have the European options and here if you go on the uh, NSC website you can see here we have an option of expiry date and you can filter your options based on the expiry date third we have here is strike price so you can see here on the website we have the option to filter based on the strike price and what is the strike price strike price is the predetermined price on which the options can be excised it can be bought if it's the call option or it can be sold if it is the put option so you can see here this option chain consists of different strike prices and based on that we can filter that and if you are buying an option it is known as the call buy or sell options so here i can write predetermined price on which an option can be exercised and exercise means we can uh, sell or buy an option then we have calls and puts it is very simple we have learned this already first we have calls call option means right to buy an underlying asset at the strike price you can simply say the meaning of call is the right to buy and what about put put is the right to sell and you have to make sure that it is right to buy and you have to keep in mind that these all are rights not the obligation so you can write here not the obligation it's completely up to you that whether you want to excise this option or not right these are just right for the option buyer but for the option seller these are the obligation hopefully it's very clear right it's not difficult let me remove these and you can see here these are the call information of the old option call contracts and this is the information about the put options and here is the strike price this one this column now we have bid and ask prices you can see here bid and ask so what is the meaning of bid and ask okay what is bid bid is the highest price a buyer is willing to buy any underlying assets buy any asset then what about the ask ask is the lowest price a seller willing to sell any underlying asset this is very uh, common basic then we have an another interesting concept which is known as the spread and spread is nothing but the difference between the ask and bid and this is where the market makers play we will understand about market makers also in future next we have very important thing to note which is oi what is the meaning of open interest open interest open interest is the total number of outstanding option contract that have been not settled you can say total number of outstanding option contract which have been not settled yet not settled yet and what is the meaning of high open interest high open interest indicates that large number of participants are in the market or you can simply say these contracts are not yet excised correct okay next we have this change in oi is simply means how many contracts are uh, sold or bought recently then we have volume volume is nothing but how many contracts traded in that given period it depends on your time frame okay now we have implied volatility iv it is the most important thing you can see in the option chain so let's understand this thoroughly iv so when we talk about the concept of implied volatility we also have to understand about the historical volatility and let me tell you what is that so generally we have two kinds of volatility which is first is historical and second is implied what is the meaning of historical this is also known as realized right so what is the meaning of historical or realized volatility okay so what is historical volatility historical volatility means it is the actual moment in the price of an asset and this is calculated based on the past data you can write past data which has been realized already right and this implied is the future volatility future and we know that we can never know the exact implied volatility this is absolutely dependent on so many factors and nobody knows about the exact figures of the implied volatility and that is what we are always behind for the iv that what, what it will be and if you know that then you will be able to 
easily guess the prices. So we will learn a lot about this in the upcoming videos about the IV. And this is really very important uh, topic, IV. We will understand with the help of so many mathematical formulas about the implied volatility. So no need to worry about it currently. You can simply think that it is the market participants view about the future of the price. What they are thinking and based on that, this IV increases and decreases. Okay, next we have is the intrinsic and ex extrinsic value, which we have also learned in previously thoroughly intrinsic and extrinsic value. Right, we know that any option price or premium has two components. What are those? The first is the intrinsic value and second is the extrinsic value and also known as the time value. And if the option is ITM that is in the money, then we have the intrinsic value. Otherwise, for the OTMs, there is no intrinsic value and only time values there. To understand this thoroughly, please refer the video on the I button. I have explained it very well in the previous sessions. Okay, next and the last we have is Greeks. And this is where all the game happens, Greeks. We will understand this thoroughly, each and every Greek. And I can promise that after you have finished the session, you will be absolutely cleared with all the concepts of Greeks. So, in simply we can say what are Greeks? It describes the sensitivity of the market prices. Sensitivity. And that is what we want to know. If we know the sensitivity, then it becomes so easy for us to trade in the market, right? And to make money. So it has various Greeks like Delta, Gamma, then we have Theta, we have Vega, and we have Rho. These are nothing but a simple counting in the Greek. Like we have in uh, English, we have 1, 2, 3. In Hindi, we have 1, 2, 3. Similarly, this is the counting of the uh, Greeks. It's not difficult. Don't worry about this. We will understand this thoroughly in the upcoming video and uh, just focus on the current topic for now. Okay, now let me quickly show you that how you can import data from Yahoo Finance, Nasdaq and NSE. So you can see on the screen, uh, we have a code to fetch data from Yahoo Finance and you can use this and if you want, you can modify and you have to modify for sure uh, while doing this uh, trading in your production. For sure, you have to modify. It is just for the demo purpose. Then in below, this is a code to fetch data from NSE website. And this code is really awesome. Uh, I was not having enough time. So I just did a quick Google search and I found this code. And I really like this code. This has really good options. And you can see that it is fetching data of the Nifty and the last price, then support price, the major support, major resistance. So you can also understand the code and modify as per your needs. So I'll just uh, paste the link also here. This is the link of this code and you can refer it. Right. So when I run this code, you will see that it will take a few seconds, but it will give the data in very formatted manner. You can see here the put and call options, the support and resistance. And this is for the uh, Yahoo Finance in the above. So if you want to change the ticker, you can change it to, let's say, Amazon and it will fetch the data for the Amazon. So this was it for this video and I will see you in the next video and we will understand about the Greeks. So until then, bye bye, take care, have a nice day.